G'day, this is James and I'm back to show you yet another amazing sweet pea design. If this is your first sew along with us, I would like to welcome you. If you have done a sew along with us before, it's great to have you back. For our February sew along, we will be making the quilted patchwork tote bag. I didn't get the chance to put this bag together myself, but Cassie told me she had a lot of fun making it, and didn't it turn out amazing? The design includes 8 blocks that can be made in the 4x4, 5x5 and 6x6 hoops. In this video we will be showing you the stitch out of block 1 and the construction of the bag. We also recommend you refer to the detailed, photographed instructions we provide while completing this tote bag. Let's get started. Hoop up your cutaway stabilizer, remembering to pin along the edge like so. This will help keep the stabilizer in place. Then go ahead and stitch the batting down. Once stitched down, trim back all the excess batting up to the stitching, leaving 1 to 2 mm excess. Once trimmed, stitch down the placement line for fabric A. Next, place your fabric A piece right sides up on the hoop, covering the placement line, and stitch down. Here, we are using our sweet pea cork. Start embroidering the red work onto your block. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the fabric about 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching. Remember, do not trim any fabric in the seams. In the instructions, we say to trim before the red work, but this is optional. Go on and repeat the same applique embroidery and trimming process for fabric B and C. Remember to leave the fabric in the seams. Begin your satin stitch along fabric A and B. Embroider the satin stitch along fabric C. You have now completed the stitch out of block 1. Take your work out of the hoop and trim back the seams to half an inch. Repeat the same process for the rest of the blocks. You will need to make two of each block for the two panels of the tote bag. 16 blocks in total. Awesome work everyone. Now moving on to the construction of the tote bag. We will start by laying out the first eight blocks for the front panel of the bag. To begin joining the panel, take your first two blocks and place them right sides together, matching up the existing stitching on the blocks. Pin along one edge. Move over to your sewing machine and stitch along the pinned edge, staying in between the border stitching. Continue the same pinning and stitching process to join the remaining blocks onto the row. Once sewn, iron open the seams on the back of the blocks. Follow the same steps for the second row. Place the two rows right sides together, matching up the existing stitching on the blocks. Pin along one edge. Move over to your sewing machine and stitch along the pinned edge, staying in between the border stitching. Make sure you have the intersections of the blocks matched up perfectly before sewing the rest of the seam. Open out and iron the seams flat. Repeat the same process for the back panel of the bag. Great, the next step is adding the bottom border to the front panel. To make the bottom border, first measure the bottom of the front panel to get the correct length of fabric E. Cut out fabric E. We use the PU leather from our new Sweep Here Essentials range for the base of our sample. To help with the stability of our bag base, we use spray adhesive to attach stabilizer as another layer of stability. You can also add batting to your base. Place and center the front panel on top of the bottom border, right sides together, pin or clip together. Move over to your sewing machine and stitch the two together.
Fold over the border and top stitch to give a neat finish. Trim the ends of the bottom border so they are straight and in line with the front panels. Repeat the same pinning and stitching process to attach the back panel to the opposite edge of the bottom border. Place Fabric H on your table. Then place the bag on top of Fabric H right sides together and pin around the perimeter. Trim the lining, leaving an extra half inch on each end. Now trim the lining so the sides are even with the bag. Once trimmed, remove the pins and fold the lining fabric in half and iron along the crease. Then open the lining fabric and cut in half using the crease as a cutting guide. Now you want to add some stabilizer to the top of your lining for some extra support. First, measure the top of the lining, then cut two strips of medium to heavy iron on interfacing and apply to the top edge of the lining pieces on the wrong side. Iron on. This interfaced edge is the top opening of the tote bag and will be stitched to the outside of the tote once both are completed. It's time to make the straps. First cut out the two fabric G pieces and cut some stabilizer to match. Then use spray adhesive to attach the stabilizer to fabric G. Also a quick note, you can change the length and width of the straps depending on what you want. Fold the edges in about one centimeter, half an inch, wrong sides together and iron. Fold in half lengthways, iron and clip. Take over to your machine and top stitch the edges together. Repeat on the other side for an even finish. Remember to use the same color bobbin thread. To join the front and back of the bag together, fold the outside of your tote bag right sides together and pin along the two shorter edges. Use your sewing machine to stitch a half inch seam along these two pinned edges, matching the intersections up correctly before sewing the seam. Turn your bag right side out to check that the side seams match. Turn your bag inside out again to make the box corners. Start by pushing the bottom corners out as shown. Press the seams open. Now with the bag still wrong side out, use your scissors to clip the corner so you can open the seam flat. Use a ruler to mark a 45 degree angle along the edge. How far in you draw the line will decide how deep your bottom will be. We chose to make ours four inches from side to side. Use a pen or pencil to draw the line. Pin in place to secure. Stitch along this line to create the bottom corners. Ensure that the seam is open as you stitch over it. Repeat for the other side and make sure they are even. Trim a quarter inch from the stitch down line on both sides. Turn your toe right sides out and check the box corners. Next we're going to add the bottom feet to our bag. These are totally optional but it does look professional and keeps your bag safe from too much wear and tear. Firstly, mark 1.5 inch squared from the corners on the top and bottom. Once you have the start areas marked, use your unpicker to place a small hole in the base. Stick the pointy end of your feet into the opening and secure the foot from the inside of the back. Continue the exact same process for the remaining three feet. The next step is also optional, but we recommend you give it a go because it does give the bag an awesome quality to it. Measure the top of your bag to get the length of your zipper. We cut it eight centimeters or three inches longer than the width of the bag lining. Tape the ends of the zipper so the zip pull doesn't come off. Now cut out all the fabric you need for the zip closure. 
Refer to the written instructions for the fabric requirements. You will need two zip end covers, two facing strips, two zip extension tabs. Once cut, lay them out onto your workbench. Fold a single piece of the zip end cover fabric widthways, right sides together, and press with the iron. Then stitch in from that edge a quarter inch. Press the seam open. Make a tube turning the fabric inside out halfway right side of the fabric to the outside. Slide the folded edge of the half tube along onto one end of the zip. The seam should be on the underside, leaving 5 eighths of an inch of the zip showing. Stitch through all layers of press a foot width from the raw edges of the tube. Roll the folded edge of the tube fabric down to the end of the zip until the zip tape is covered. Edge stitch the end of the tab and press lightly, and repeat for the other end of the zip. Prepare the zip extension tab by pressing each end in half an inch. Now press this strip widthways right sides together. It is important to find the middle of the zip length and the middle of the zip extension tab strip. To do so, fold each in half and draw a line on the crease. Sandwich the zip inside the press strip ensuring the zip is tucked up to the fold of the fabric. There should be an even amount of zip tape hanging out from each end. Make sure the zipper is closed and the runner is at the zip end cover. Stitch 3 8 of an inch or 1 centimeter in from the folded edge. Press all the seams away from the stitching line. Complete the steps for the remaining side. Now edge stitch along all edges to help secure. Go ahead and find the center points of the both zip extension tabs and the tote bag facing strips. With the right side of the zip facing up, lay a facing strip on top right sides together, pin or use quilt clips to keep the seam in place. Stitch this seam with a half inch or 1.25 centimeter seam allowance. Repeat on the other side. Press these seams flat out to the ends with the seams closed and the bulk facing the tote bag facing strip. Lay the bag facing onto the right side of the tote bag lining. Ensure the seam holding the zip extension tab is tucked up into the facing. Pin or clip the facing to the top edge of the lining. Stitch all edges a quarter inch in from the edge, like top stitching. Stitch in the ditch along the zip extension seam for extra strength. Repeat for the other side of your lining. Fold in the ends of the zipper onto the underside of the zip pull, placing the lining right sides together. Pin around the sides leaving a 7 inch gap at the base to turn the bag through later. Stitch along the pinned edges, remembering to leave the gap at the bottom. Re 
repeat the boxing of your corners the same as on the outside of your back. To attach your straps, place both raw edges flush with the top raw edge of the tote, any width apart with the loop facing down. Clip or pin in place. Repeat the above steps to attach the remaining strap to the back of the tote. Try and make sure it is in the same location as the strap on the front. Use your sewing machine to stay stitched the straps in place. Open your zipper, turn the lining right sides out and turn the bag wrong way out. Place the lining on the inside of your bag. You will have the right sides together. Attach the lining to the bag at the top edge using clips. Stitch with a half inch seam. Stitching on the wrong side of the bag means you can make sure you are stitching inside the borderline on the front of the bag. So this line of sewing does not show on the front of the bag. Turn through the gap left at the base of the lining. Push the lining down into the bag and iron the seam around the top of the bag. When the zip is open all the way, it will not prevent the lining from lying flat in any way. Use clips to keep the lining tucked in. Top stitch around the top of the bag to keep it flat. Make sure the straps are facing outside the bag while top stitching. Iron and pin the opening of the lining closed. Stitch the opening closed on your sewing machine. Fantastic work everyone. If you have followed all the steps correctly, you will be looking at your stunning and sophisticated quilted patchwork tote bag. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this month's sew along and remember to share all your fantastic projects on our Sweet Pea Facebook group. See you all next time.